Hi everyone, I'm very pleased to be joined by Lewis Morris here at Goodin Howe in Wellingborough where the Movers and Shakers series is all about offering smart advice and solutions back to the industry. Lewis, first question, how and why did you get into the KBB industry? Hello Simon. Um, I was advised by one of my friends about um, an interior design job that was up for, up for opening so I applied for it. Um, being very customer friendly with which I, which I am anyway, um, I applied for it and luckily enough I succeeded and got the job. So, so have you had training since you started? Yes, I've had a, a few, a few um, training op op opportunities, um, whether that be for a bathroom or kitchen, right. um, virtual worlds, design programs. I've, I've so had a fair few. Is this majority in-house training or have suppliers helped you with Suppliers have uh, helped. I've had a lot of in-house training, right. but suppliers okay. have, have helped to accommodate that as well. Okay. Very good. So, Lewis, what other advice could you offer somebody who wants to go to that all-important interview for a kitchen or bathroom job? Personally, having a portfolio, whether okay. that be in interior design, um, but yeah. I'd say a portfolio is definitely to important. Demonstrate what you've done before. Exactly. Yeah. Whether exactly. that be educational or practically. Yeah. Oh, precisely, yeah, 100%. Okay. Good. 100%. Okay, fantastic. So in business, we all need USPs, unique selling points. So what do Goody and Howe offer the customer that's different? I believe it's the, the family aspect to it. It's a lot more personal. Um, things we do, you might not find somewhere else because we take a lot of pride and care into what we actually do as a company. Okay, so customer service is very Definitely, key. definitely. Okay. What else do Goody and Howell do that's different, say, from your local competitors? A key difference is a majority of our installers are all employed by us okay, as Goody okay. and Howell. Fantastic, that is a key difference yes. to most retailers, yeah. Okay. So we've come out of the majority of the lockdown measures, Lewis. So how, how well is the buy appointment only system working? If I'm honest with you, it's working fantastic. Okay. We had it previously where the doors were open, which is not a problem, but we wasn't being able to see as many customers as what were coming in. So with oh. the appointment only, it's a lot more personal because I find bathrooms are a lot more personal than what they used to be. Yeah. So personally, having that time, that hour to sit down with a customer and go through everything in deep aspect is a lot easier than having customers coming around and having 15 minutes here or right. half so an hour so you're talking there. quality time by exactly. appointment. Yeah. Exactly. So if you had to look at the conversion rate pre-COVID, pre-lockdown compared to conversion rate today, so out of 10, how many would you have previously converted compared to where we are now? You can say maybe four or five. Previously? Previously, yeah, that, that's a, a, a maximum. Right. But how many are you converting now in the new you, system? You can go up to seven and eight now. It's, right. It's that's helped quite a lot. very significant, is that? Yeah. yeah. Very significant. Okay, yeah. that's good advice. So you would say that would be a good thing to maintain going forwards? I would indeed, yeah. I would. I would. I'd say, I'd say it's helped a lot. So what advice could you offer to make customers feel welcome and relaxed when they come in the showroom post-lockdown? I like to make customers feel welcome by firstly offering them a tea or coffee as soon as they come into the showroom. Yes. Um, then I would let them browse at their own leisure because I don't think anyone likes walking into a showroom and being followed the whole way round. Right. So the first thing I like to do is let them have a look around and I will always get up five minutes later to go and make sure they're okay, yeah. if they've got any questions, yeah. if they wanted to take a seat and go through anything that they've got with them. So you're giving people time to customise to the showroom environment first, then going to approach the customer a few minutes later of once course. they've got their tea or coffee. Exactly. Okay. And I've been told that quite a lot from um, customers that have been somewhere previous right. and they've, they've felt um, watched the whole time. Someone's walked around the whole okay. showroom with them, right. not really helped. Right. So I think that's what makes us quite different as okay. well. So it's less pressure. Of course, yeah. Okay, good. So Lewis, have you seen order values increase with the higher conversion rate and how have you maintained your margins? Well, um, I definitely believe our sales have gone up. Mm -hmm. um, with regards to margins, we've had a lot of customers looking at online prices. All right, yeah. We've had quite a lot of that recently mm -hmm. where customers have brought quotations in from an online service. Um, we've tried to price match, which a lot of it we can do, but um, with the margin, it's always maintained the same. Every manufacturer is different. Every single manufacturer, the terms can be totally different to right. one to another. Right. But the margin has always pretty much been the exact same. Let's say you quoted the customer 20000 for a kitchen and their budget yep. was only 15000 How do you stop the discount process to maintain that margin on that project? So a customer may look at a kitchen in a price group five, which could be one of the highest okay. ones you could get. We would then look at the exact same kitchen right. in a price group three, 
okay. which could be a fraction of the price itself. Okay, but so the margin is still there, it's just by changing the different price ranges. Yeah, so your advice is not to automatically discount, look at the other options of that manufacturers offer of that can maintain that all-important margin for the Definitely. business. So Lewis, what do you think makes a good showroom team? Firstly, um, every morning we have a meeting to okay. um, lay out the day of who's got what customers coming in, who's got what jobs coming in. Right. So personally, it's this communication for me. That's, that's a big that's thing. That's the number one. Big thing, yes. Okay, so your advice would be that before you start your day's work, everybody should understand each other's job roles exactly. and their responsibilities and who's coming in to plan the day ahead. Definitely. And you support each other in that way. Exactly, yeah. It, it helps okay. a lot. Helps a lot. Knowing what you've got throughout that day, it, yeah. it does help a lot. So that's good advice. So Lewis, what advice can you offer to manage an angry customer that perhaps isn't happy? First thing first is communication. Okay. Um, right from the start, before yeah. an order's even placed, the quotation, you always check the lead times before you order. Okay. After that, you're always in, in communication with the customer, okay. letting them know every step of the right. way, what's, what's happening and what's going on. Okay, excellent. So we looked at current products in the showroom or current trends and obviously we're surrounded by plenty of kitchens at the moment what is the number one ask that customers want now for their today's kitchen well it's changed a lot but um okay. a lot of customers are asking for black dark okay. colors okay so whether that be black taps black um, showers oh, right. so brassware yeah um, whether it be units tiles a lot of customers are going for the darker look yeah. nowadays. So they mix the mixing colours as well? or Yeah, so yeah. You, you can go for your, your light colours and your dark colours. Right, so contrast. that's exactly a lot of contrasting going yeah. on. Where do you think that trend's coming from, Lewis? Pinterest. That's interesting, <laughs> I believe, yeah. yeah okay. Pinterest. Yeah. I've had a lot of customers come in, ask for the okay. products that are on Pinterest, so yeah. I've definitely got my work cut out to try and source this for okay. them. So I guess your advice could be for other designers that are watching this to maybe look and pay attention to what Pinterest options are. Oh, without a doubt. in today's trend. Without a doubt, yeah. yeah. It does help quite a lot because then okay. you're keeping up to date with the latest trends. How do you ensure the bathroom or the kitchen installer is absolutely your brand ambassador? So firstly, you'd keep the fitter up to date with the plans, okay. with the quotations, if there's been any amendments from the start to the finish. Okay. And if there are any issues in between, which we very, very, very rarely have, yeah. um, we rectify that and get that sorted straight away. Okay, so, Off. so Lewis, what advice could you offer? Let's paint the picture that the customer's brought the appliances for the kitchen and the oven, unfortunately, um, has an issue after a year. How do you deal with that customer that rings up asking for help? Firstly, what we would do is we would call the manufacturer on okay. behalf of the customer. Oh, right. Okay, so that's different than, I guess, uh, just asking the customer to ring themselves. E exactly, yes. Um, a lot of the times the manufacturers would want to speak to the customers directly right. okay. um, to get this sorted probably quicker than what it would do if I was to call them. Right, so you're giving an added value on your service. And that's Precisely. That's the reason they buy from you. Precisely. So, so how else could you encourage customers to provide you with great feedback? Film testimonials um, are a great idea because right. they could be projected over social media yeah. and to other companies Good. for them to see. Good, so your advice is in addition to asking customers to write and explain how happy they are, yep. you could offer to create a film with them e to exactly. say, show off their kitchen and obviously show the, your future potential customers how wonderful your service is. Precisely, yeah. Perfect. Definitely. Okay. Thank you, Lewis. No problem. And we always ask this question at the end of these sessions. So can you relay an amusing story that's made you laugh or the customer laugh that we can all learn from? Oh, God. Um, yeah, I did have one um, saying that. It was a few years ago. I was sitting at my desk. It was a normal Saturday afternoon. Mm. And I was dealing with a, a husband and a wife who were arguing at which colour units to go for. Right. And I looked up and this, this lady had thrown the gentleman into the bath. She'd actually lifted him up and thrown she'd, him in. She'd completely thrown him into the bath. Good grief. So, what uh, was the argument about? The colour of a, a wash basin unit. Good grief. So I didn't think it would um, amount to that. So I guess the advice is that you have to be a good mediator. Definitely. Okay. 100%. Okay. 100%. Okay, good. So, Lewis, thank you very much for taking part in our Movers and Shakers today. And the idea being the advice you've given today will be beneficial for those listening. So uh, I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Not a problem, Simon. Thank you.